Hey guys, it's Luke here and welcome back to a, another video. You join me here this morning at the Goodwood Motor Circuit, a location which I've been to many, many times before for car events, breakfast meets, track days and everything in between. I'm here this morning with my Golf R, actually in a very empty paddock. I've never seen Goodwood this quiet, that just shows how stupidly early it is. Now I'm here today with a friend of mine um, with his Golf R, a rather ridiculous Golf R. Uh, he hasn't arrived here yet, so I'm currently just, well, I'm literally the only one here, which is actually quite amusing. Um, so yeah, we're waiting for him to turn up, and uh, fingers crossed, well the sun's out, so it's going to be a good day, but uh, I'm really looking forward to seeing this thing because it's arguably one of the most mental Golf R's in the UK. There it is. <laughs> look at that. It makes my one look absolutely, well, it looks boring, doesn't it? <laughs> and tame. So he's going to go straight to the noise test area and then, I guess, get straight out on track and enjoy this beautiful day. So the car has been on a couple of sighting laps to warm it up and everything. I thought that I'd do the comical thing of parking my car next to it. And it's only until now that you can really see just how much work has been done to this car. It's believed that over 70 grand worth of modifications on this. Well, not including the price of the actual car. So let's have, I say a very quick run through, but I think it's going to take me quite a while to kind of give you an overview of the whole entire car. So. Um, from the factory in 2014, well this basically is a Mark 7 DSG three-door Golf R, finished in lapis blue, and that is pretty much all that there is that's still remaining today. Um, what I quite like about it actually is how that it hasn't got a crazy livery, it hasn't got a crazy wrap, it's still a very traditional Golf R colour, and it's still, well, minus the fact that it definitely isn't quite understated, it, it kind of does almost in a good way um, but there we go there's mine and there's that one I mean <laughs> look at the thing it looks absolutely nuts so to kind of kick start things off actually uh, to give you a bit of a background on the car this car was originally uh, bought and made by Miltec a uh, very well-known uh, exhaust manufacturer based here in the UK. It was their project car for quite a while and it actually did a few uh, endurance races. I think it did, one of the last races it did uh, was with, I believe, Chris Hoy um, and Tom Onslow Cole, uh, touring car driver, uh, on, an, on a nine-hour endurance race. Um, so, I mean, it's properly set up for this type of thing. I mean, I'll give you a quick glance inside quickly. Look at this. I mean, <laughs> I mean, to be honest with you, we still maintain the original um, infotainment. The climate control, though, that doesn't work because it's a race car. We obviously have uh, the original dials and everything, but I mean, pretty much everything has been strapped, uh, has been stripped out. Sorry, we've got complete uh, bucket seats by Corbo. Um, some nice, very nice harnesses, <laughs> um, which definitely strap you. I think they're four-point harnesses, but I mean, this welded in. Uh, roll cage. I mean, it's completely welded in to uh, the chassis of the car. Um, so, I mean, we'll get more to the interior in a moment. But to give you a bit of a run through of the general modifications to the car, we have the R400 uh, wide body package on it. Basically, what that is, it's a completely new front end, um, wider arches, I believe, and a pretty uh, nuts looking rear end as well. But look at these intakes here. I mean, you're going to need certain amount of cooling uh, to cool this thing because I mean although it is still a two litre it uh, I well, actually no that's not true um, it doesn't have the original two litre Golf R engine in it I believe it's got a Seat Leon um, race prepped engine in it stage three running about 500 brake horsepower I mean just coming to the rear end of this look at that it looks absolutely nuts and you know the most mental thing about this whole thing the fact that it wears number plates. So the exhaust, of course, it has a Miltec exhaust. This one is a one-off 
Um, it's almost like a, an R32 style exhaust. Obviously with the Golf R you normally have four exhausts, two on either side, but here we've got the two uh, central mounted, which I really like. I think it really, really suits the car. And note that there's not any big garish wing. In fact, there's no wing at all. And that's what I mean about it kind of still seeming quite understated. But again, definitely not being understated. Now this exhaust, going back to this briefly, is titanium. And because his car has been driven pretty flat out for the majority of its life, you can see it's turning nice and blue. This one, uh, this car actually comes with two different exhausts. This one, which is the quiet exhaust and a fully fledged mental exhaust. Obviously for track days, uh, it's probably easier to have the quieter one to save being back flagged because you don't want to spend all this money uh, on a project car like this and not actually use it as intended. Now, under the bonnet is obviously where the, well, I would say the majority of the work has happened. I presume that is the case. Oh, by the way, before we get to that, custom bonnet. And this car obviously being an actual race car, you're probably noticing what these are. Now this is for the fire extinguishing system, which obviously isn't connected at the moment. Uh, but that's basically some, I don't know, some fancy stuff uh, to do with that. But underneath here, we have the heart of the beast. Now look at this. Now actually this has uh, quite a similar setup to Calvin's uh, old Golf R or Arthur's Golf R. You guys may remember that. In fact the car, the exact car, is actually featured on the channel back when Calvin had it. Now under here, like I said, uh, a lot of racing line stuff. Um, so we have a stage 3 hybrid turbo back here. Big old lump. Um, we've got completely new injectors, pistons, everything's all been operated uh, and basically enhanced. Now, this car obviously has a custom ECU, uh, obviously to map it to whatever you'd like. And like I mentioned earlier on, running about 500 brake. Now you can, uh, with the stock 2 litre, you can get it to about 600, but uh, the owner of the car chose to kind of leave it as 500 just to be safe. Um, doesn't want anything else going wrong with it. So we've got a full racing line intake and oil management on the car as well, uh, as well as a forged intercooler and coolant hoses. I mean, with a car this pumped up, the one thing you have to maintain is to keep it nice and cool. In fact, on today, um, in fact, just the, the few uh, kind of warm-up laps um, that have been done this morning, um, it was running really very hot. Um, so you do have to keep an eye on the old oil temperature and bits and bobs like that. Now even, I mean, this thing has been completely stripped out. It even has a lightweight battery on it, which just knows <laughs> that you're in it to win it. I mean, the thing is absolutely nuts. And just kind of sitting here looking at this engine bay, it doesn't look like a Golf R. And especially from the inside. I mean, even just now, it, it hardly looks like a Golf R. It's that modified, it's that mental. And that's why. I love it. Now moving down to the wheels, we have Team Dynamics Pro Race 1.2s fitted on the car, very very lightweight wheel, and also you might notice the Trofeo R's wrapping around those. I mean this thing is, <laughs> you just keep on finding more and more bits on this car which just makes it more and more mental. Now when the current owner bought the car they had six pots um, on it uh, in terms of braking uh, but now they've been upgraded to I think 260 mil eight pots. I mean just look at the size of those. That is absolutely nuts and in fact if I just scan back to my boring old stock one you can just see the difference. Absolutely mental. Of course the car has been completely set up for track. I mean you look at the camera on the front. Look at that slam down on the floor as well. Now the suspension, like I mentioned, is a three-way adjustable race suspension. Of course you've got to do that. You can completely set the whole thing up to how you want it. And this, well, believe me, it's pretty planted, I'm sure of it. I've seen some videos of this going around some other tracks before today's filming, and it just looks, I mean, it's rapid, absolutely rapid. But before we get to the proper interior, let me just have a look under here. So. This is not your everyday sight <laughs> when opening the back of a Golf R. Now, like I mentioned, um, this car has a welded-in roll cage, and that's when you know it's serious. And you know what? It is a proper job. In fact, the whole car, the whole interior of the car has been resprayed to like this grey colour, metallic grey, obviously to match the roll cage, but it's just really, really well done. Obviously, you've got barely any trim in here. Barely any at all. I mean, look at that. 
that looks absolutely nuts, doesn't it? Obviously, we've got a spare wheel that can go there, but that is about it. Now, I, well, to be honest with you, if anything, it's a little bit more practical than a standard Golf R because you've got a little bit more space. Don't have any seats to fold down or anything, but <laughs> I mean, just look at it. Absolutely nuts. Anyway, let's have a proper little look inside here. Now, it is a full cage, so I mean, look at it all over the roof as well. In fact, the fire extinguisher system um, is mounted on the roof. It's not mounted at the moment, but look at this. It's, it's mental, is what it is. And to think, this is a Golf R, and once was a very stock 2014 Mark VII Golf R, is mental. Over 70 grand worth of modifications on this thing over its time. <laughs> it's nuts. I mean, look at this, right? So we've got carbon door carts with the stock window switches. <laughs> it just does make you laugh. Anyway, let's take a very ungraceful step in here. Just show you a little bit more. Oh, dearie me. Now, this is the kind of car which, once you're in, you're in. And these seats, they look incredible. and love the blue section you got in the middle. Well, like I mentioned, that this uh, is obviously a DSG car. I don't think uh, the manual transmission and clutch would be able to deal with this amount of power, and you can't go wrong with a DSG. Um, but yeah, I think that's it from the inside of this thing. I mean, just, I cannot get over this. This cage is a work of art. I cannot wait to be sat in there really very soon. I cannot wait to experience this. Anyway, very ungraceful attempt at getting out. I think a few other things to mention. It has uh, the latest wave track diff on the car, uh, which I hear from the owner has made a massive difference in keeping the car planted. But I mean, look at this, all opened up. <laughs> it's crazy, let's have one last look inside here as well. Nuts, absolutely nuts. But anyway, I think I've pretty much mentioned everything. And look at that stupid little thing over there. It just looks completely outshadowed by this. It's gonna feel very strange getting into that later on today. But anyway, there we go. Probably the most mental Golf R here in the UK, if not the world. Anyway, whilst hop off the press, let's hop in the passenger seat and experience this thing flat out around Goodwood. I cannot wait. Let's do it. So, wow, this does not feel like a golf R at all. This cage is absolutely mental. Now, we'll get harnessed up, close the door, and then we'll get down the track. This is something else. Nice harnesses too.
wow. I think that's my conclusion from that. Wow. Um, I've kind of had a little bit of time to uh, just reorganise myself because that was insane. To think that a Golf R can be that stripped out, that modded, that fast is just beyond me. I, I'm really not looking forward to going back to my lovely stock car <laughs> in a minute, but that was unreal. I can't get over the fact that over 70 grand worth of modifications have been done to that car. <laughs> anyway, it's been a great day down here at Goodwood. It always is, whenever I'm down here, that, to be honest, there's always a track day going on here at Goodwood, always. And you might be able to hear some construction going on in the background because um, the Revival is happening soon and this is what they're doing. They're kind of building it all up. Um, I've never been to the Revival. I think I should probably go there one day. Um, it looks really cool. Um, and um, But anyway, yeah, I'm, I'm rambling on. I'm completely all over the place. Um, just been thrown around a track in a 500 brake golf R, um, which was unbelievable. Anyway, a massive thank you to the owner for inviting me down today. Um, and letting me shoot a video of his car and not only that but also go out and uh, experience it firsthand unbelievable bit of kit um, and uh, I, I want I want it I really want it it's 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 special <laughs> it's really really special but anyway that is going to do it for this video I hope you guys have enjoyed if you have please do make sure you leave a like and make sure you subscribe for all the adventures still to come <laughs>